Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. And in this video, I will be talking about biotic and abiotic factors in an environment. The more that you learn about science, the more you are going to discover that scientists are kind of a bunch of show offs because we like to impress people. It sounds way smarter to use big words than to just say things in a clear and concise way. So we make up a lot of big words that uh, we use to describe phenomena that we uh, explore or discover in the universe. In this video, we're going to be talking about some big sciencey words that could easily be said with uh, more uh, recognizable words that you're already fam familiar with. So the words we're going to be learning are biotic and abiotic. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what biotic is or what, it, what a biotic uh, thing in an environment is. Factor, that's the word I'm looking for and a what an abiotic factor in an environment is and you already you already know these concepts because you're familiar since like the beginning of your life with the words well maybe not the very beginning of your life but pretty early on you learned what the word dead means and the word alive and non-living and maybe you maybe you haven't heard non-living but that's not very hard to understand so biotic and abiotic factors in an environment basically are just a way of categorizing things between living, dead, and non-living. So think of environments. There are a lot of different environments in our world. Can you think of some? What are some environments out there that you are familiar with? Such as, for example, a forest. Uh, where I live in West Virginia, we have a lot of forest. In fact, it is a giant forest okay, and also a mountain. Uh, deserts, where I used to live in Utah, very deserty place. Or jungles like uh, rainforests uh, or plains. There's a lot, or tundra or taiga. There's a lot of environments out there, ponds and lakes and streams and oceans. All of these environments have different factors that make the environment what it is. That might be temperature, the amount of rainfall, uh, the amount of light that they get, the type of soil that they have, uh, the kinds of things that live there, the relationships between predators and prey. All of these factors combine to make a, an environment a certain way. So if I go to a rainforest, it's going to be pretty recognizable to me that that is a rainforest. And no one's going to have to tell me. I'm going to look around and I'm going to be like, oh, there's a lot of plants here and it's raining. Probably I'm in a rainforest. Or if I go to the desert, you're going to know right away that you are in a desert because of the factors that are there. So scientists, we like to divide uh, or categorize factors in an environment. All these things that make the environment what it is. Uh, we like to categorize them in two groups. And those are either biotic or abiotic. Now, the, the uh, prefix bio, B-I-O, means life. And you see this prefix a lot in, for example, biology. Bio, B-I-O, biology. Biology is the study of life. So wherever you see B-I-O, that means life. Okay, so you can remember that biotic factors are factors having something to do with living things. Now, it isn't just uh, currently living things. 
but also once living things, so dead things, are also biotic. Uh, because if it was ever, remember this way, if it was ever biotic, it is always biotic. So a tree is biotic because it is living. Remember, B-I-O, bio means living. Well, a tree stump is also biotic, even though the tree stump is dead, because it was once living. If it's ever biotic, it's always biotic. If it's, it doesn't change from biotic to abiotic or abiotic to biotic. Also, any byproducts of living things are also biotic. Uh, like honey. Honey is a byproduct that comes from bees, right? Uh, milk. Uh, anything that was made by a living thing, including waste, like, you know, pee and poop, that is, uh, those are biotic factors as well. So the abiotic factors then are what is left. Abiotic means, well, the prefix a means not or it means opposite. So if I put an a in front of biotic and I make it abiotic, that means non-living and never living. Okay, such as, for example, sunlight and temperature and water and air. All of these things, dirt. They're in an environment. There are rocks in an environment. There's water in an environment. But they're not alive. They've never been alive. And they'll never be alive. Okay, water is one that's commonly confused. Because there is a lot of water in living things. You are made up of a lot, a lot, a lot of water in your body. But uh, that water is not alive. You need water. Living things need water. Living things need a lot of different abiotic factors, like plants need dirt uh, and sunlight. Now, uh, we need water. We need warm temperature. We need air to breathe. Okay, but just because we need something doesn't mean that it is biotic. It is the, what, what determines whether it's biotic or abiotic is whether it is living or once living or a byproduct of something living, like honey, or whether it itself is non-living. Water is non-living. So it is abiotic. Okay? So as you try to determine whether something is biotic or abiotic in an environment, then look at whether it is alive or once living or a byproduct of something living, or whether it is never, neverly everly living. Neverly everly will will be, neverly everly will everly be living. That's a great sentence right there. Only could be created by someone this handsome. Um, so you look at an environment and you try to understand that environment based on the biotic and abiotic factors in the environment. That is really what makes the environment what it is. All of those certain predictable factors in a desert, dry, very little water, uh, very little, very few living things, lots of sand. Yeah, that's going to be the same. Those are the same biotic and abiotic factors in just about any desert. Uh, and, it, and the same could go for forests, lots of trees, uh, pretty decent soil, a reasonable amount of, of rainfall. So those factors kind of help to give consistency and help us to determine what uh, environment that we are in. Well, hello. Thank you for watching my one take rambling science video where I talk a lot and uh, try to do as few and usually no edits whatsoever. So you hear all my ums and my awkward pauses as I try to collect my thoughts into my head. If you like learning about science, do me a favor. Uh, I have classes that I teach over on outschool.com and you can find out about these classes by going to my website which is handsome science teacher because I mean look at this face handsome science teacher.com where you can sign up and get access to not only these videos 
format because you already have access to those, right? They're free. But also access to packets that go along with them and live conferences with me where we where I teach you and grade your work and we learn together. I have an entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade science. Uh, also, you are welcome to, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that helps me too, just because it gets my, the word out about me.